Okay, here we have 9.7, graphing a piecewise defined function, problem type three. And so for this one, we're gonna apply the same kind of strategy that we've been doing before, which is um, you're gonna use y equal to this expression for one table, and then y equal to this expression for the other table. And then the values in the table are defined by the conditions over here on the side. So x less than one means one is an input, but since there's no equal bar, it'll be an open circle there. And then here, um, I gotta pick values that are less than one to get my three points. So zero and negative one will be the x values I choose. Then for this condition on the second expression, we have to pick one as the end point, but because of the equal bar, we will be using a solid dot. And then we have to further pick x values that are greater than one, so two and three. And then what I will do is I will plug each of these values into this equation to find the corresponding y values. So I get zero, I get one, and I get zero. Here when I plug in these values, I get zero, I get two, and I get negative four. I think this is negative two and then negative four. There we go. So when I go to graph this, remember this is a squared, so it will look like a curve. Um, and because it's a negative squared, it'll probably look like a downward curve, okay? Here, this is a line, it's a negative line, so it should probably be going down in that direction, okay? Um, now, in order for me to plot this, I have to remember how Alex functions. These are the open dot and the solid dot. All the other points are regular points, meaning I will use the pencil to plot all of those points, but I will use the open dot to plot this point, and I will use the solid dot to plot this point. And so the first thing I'm going to do is work with this function first, and then I will work with that function. Because when it comes to the square, there's a bunch of different things that you're having to click on for this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plot the open circle at 1, 0, which is here. Then at 0, 1, which is there. And negative 1, 0, which is here. Then what you're going to do is you're going to click on the parabola icon. When you click on that, the first thing it's going to tell you is to click on the vertex. Now, if my parabola opens upward like this, then the vertex is right here at the bottom. If my parabola opens downward like I mean mine will, the vertex is the little peak at the top, okay? And since mine is going downward, the first button I would click on is this point here because this is the vertex of that problem. So this is the first thing I will plug on, I will click on. From there, it's gonna tell you to click on a region. Either click above this point, click below this point, click to the right of this point, or to the left of this point to tell the computer which way this parabola should be opening, okay? So if I click on something up in this region, it's going to graph the, it's going to put a parabola like this, upward, which is not what I need. I need it to go through these three points. If I click on an area over here, it's gonna make the parabola go sideways, which again, is not what I need. If I click the graph over here, it's gonna make the parabola go sideways over here. Again, that's not what I need. So I would have to click on an area below that first point that I clicked on so that the parabola would open downward. But then in order to make the parabola be as wide or as narrow as it's supposed to be so that it goes through these points, you're gonna have to click on a second point. And I would click, you can click on the left one or you can click on the right one, it doesn't matter. I chose to click on the left one and when I did that, it drew the parabola like this. Okay, so once I had that, um, I had the parabola. But remember, your x value is only less than one. So you can't have the piece of the graph that's on this side, right? You're only allowed to have the graph when x is less than negative one. 
So I'm only supposed to have the part of the graph that is to the left of this positive one, which means I need to delete this piece. But in order for me to delete it, if I were to click on the erase button and just click on this right now, the whole parabola is going to go away. So what I have to do next is I have to plug on, I have to click on the scissors button. And when you click on the scissors button, click on your open or solid dot. And what that's going to do in Alex, it's going to make a big plus sign, but it's just letting you know that that is cut right there. Okay. Once you have it cut, then you can click on the eraser and click on this section down here and it will erase that section down there. But you do have to make that cut using the scissors first. Otherwise, if you click on the, the space, the whole parabola is going to go away and you're going to have to graph it all over again. Now that I've gotten this part graphed, which is really the hardest part, now I can move on to graph this. So when I plot the point 0, 1 using the solid dot, it's actually going to fill in this um, point here. Then when I plot 2 and negative 2, it's going to put an X there. And when I plot 3 and negative 4, it's going to put an X there. And then if I want to draw the line, because this is going forever in this direction, I'm going to have to use the ray button again. And remember, the ray should start where your open or closed circle is, and then the last point. So if I click on the ray button, then this point, then this point, it will draw the line for me. And it won't have an arrow maybe, but I like to put the arrows. But it does go downward in that direction forever. Okay, so it's very important that I talk about how you would put that in there, especially with the whole parabola part and having to cut the piece of the parabola, that was very important. And how to graph the parabola as well. You have to pick the peak or the valley first, then tell them how it's gonna open, whether it's gonna be upward or downward or left or right, um, or vice versa. And then you can select the second point in order to get that parabola on the computer. Now, is this um, function continuous? This one is, the two pieces are connected and there is a solid dot there in the middle. So this one, yes, it is continuous.